We're back with another edition of Textination. Happy you can join us. And we're talking about staying warm during these winter months with a bit of technology. Joining us are Jay Janung, founder and CEO, and Kyle Jacobson, the chief marketing officer at Gobi Heat. Thank you for joining us, Jay and Kyle. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Well, let's start off with the, what Gobi Heat is all about. I mean, there's there's a tip off in the name and maybe in the garments that you're wearing. Yeah, so essentially we are a heated, heated clothing company. And so we use the Gobi Desert as kind of our staple of what we do. We like to pull the imagery from the heat that the Gobi Heat Desert emanates. And we like to apply that kind of mentality into our clothing. We like to get people back out doing the things that they love, despite the weather conditions that they may be facing. Well, Jay, tell us how this all got started. Uh, I feel like I've told this story a thousand times, but it keeps getting better. Um, so feel free worked... to embellish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just color it a little bit. <laughs> Um, so I was a single mom dating, uh, who is now my current husband, current husband. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he, he had noticed that I was always cold. I had mentioned temperature and being cold and the temperature being a deterrent to activities. And he had noticed, uh, that there was a heated jacket available for purchase at the plumbing supply store. And he uh, purchased the women's version of that jacket and gave it to me. And it was, uh, you know, I was very grateful, but my product development background brain kind of kicked in and I was immediately thinking, well, this, you know, this battery is bulky and the capacity is kind of low and it's placed in a bad spot. And they didn't really put a whole lot of thought into this from a woman's perspective. And when and you bend over that plumbing supply one, it's yeah, just, it's terrible, right? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Um, and you get plumber butt. But beyond that, um, I'm, you know, my my boyfriend at the time, now husband, said, you know, what do you what do you think? And I think it, and I said, I think it's great. Um, it's poorly executed, though. It's a great idea. I mean, I could do better. And that at that point, um, he said, well, do it. Let's do it. And so he encouraged me to do it. And, you know, it was, it was a really fortuitous group of events because I did have the background in product development and the contacts and experience with uh, different factories and textile mills. And so, you know, I, I kind of put my toe in and started, you know, sending some emails and, and then it just took on a life of its own. And here we are today, five years later with some products that I'm really, truly proud of. And you're constantly evolving these products. So let's let's talk about some of the new things on the market for for this winter. You've got some new garments. Give us a little bit of an overview. Yeah, I, I truly believe this has actually been our most transformative year uh, from a product development standpoint. Uh, we have added, uh, actually both Kyle and I are coincidentally both wearing the puffer, uh, the wolf puffer that we have. Um, this is, I, I, this is just one of my absolute favorites. It's a great coat. You put it on, you're immediately warm even before you turn it on. Um, and it's just got this great buttery kind of soft fabric. Um, and so, so we're really proud of Wolf. It's selling very well, very, very popular. And it's a very versatile jacket. Uh, we also have back here, we have our Arcadia, which is a fur hood Parka, which is, this is not the best forum to show its features, but it's a, it's a really nice solid five zone heated coat for women. Um, mm -hmm. It's got this great lining with this wonderful logo inside. Um, and it's just being so well reviewed and well received. Um, I really feel like there's nothing else like it in the heated jacket market. It's we really put a lot of thought into where people are going, where the ladies who are wearing this coat are where are going, what they're doing, and how we can make that experience better. 
we yeah. also added i i do have to add that jay she does all of our designs all our product development i mean she is really the the mind and creative behind all of these amazing products what are what are the biggest challenges that you face in trying to create heated garments that that are durable that can be cleaned there's so many questions consumers might have uh, come to mind yeah and that's where it really goes back to where we think about what is the customer really doing with these products so we think about the experience and the event that they're going to what what look they want what protections they want and then as you mentioned washability and durability what what are those other elements that we want to look at um so from from the actual garment perspective those are some of the big considerations but then there's the tech perspective um we are very thoughtful about the conductors that we use we want to make sure that they're strong they're safe and yes, washable. Um, you know, it's it's great to have this amazing coat that you can wear and keep you warm, but at some point it has to be washable, right? Mm -hmm. And so we we think in terms of the end user, what their experience needs to be, and then we craft the tech to that. Um, that also extends to the battery. You can make a, a giant battery that will last, you know, three days if you want, but nobody wants to lug that thing around. So you need to be very thoughtful and deliberate about what temperatures you're going to achieve and what your uh, duration, you know, how long your battery is going to last, how heavy is your battery, how big is your battery. So these are the considerations that we are very thoughtful. And I, I feel that that's what makes us different because we are so considerate of the experience that the end user is having rather than creating a coat and saying, oh, here's way you could use this coat. We go backwards and, and create products that solve those problems in those situations. Now, battery technology is evolving and hopefully getting better all the time. What, what have you been doing there with the, with the batteries? Can you, what, what do you tell consumers here? Yeah, we, we are transitioning to, away from lithium ion to lithium polymer. Um, it's, uh, it, it's a lighter, more efficient approach. We've also added uh, the ability to be able to charge your phone from your battery without adding a lot of bulk. Our battery, our new lithium po polymer battery is actually smaller and lighter than our previous iteration of lithium ion but it also allows you to uh, one know the battery level or remaining energy on your battery and to charge your phone very interesting so is it uh it's a standard kind of battery that did simply you can you can charge up with an existing charger that you would have or tell us about it what you're doing uh, so we we run um we run our most of our products on 7.4 volts it's the most stable and even current for heated apparel. Um, there are some other choices that are easier to make like five volt USB is a very easy choice to make with, um, with some other heated apparel companies. We choose 7.4 because of the evenness and the stability of the heat. Um, so we do have a 7.4 volt lithium polymer battery it's a 6,500 milliamp hour battery. It's a hard case. Um, and it's, it, it's light, it's efficient, and it does come with a 7.4 volt, four millimeter um, charger. So it is a specific charger that we ship with the product. And how long will that last typically on, uh, on, a, on a, yeah, that's what consumers want to know. How long is it going to keep you yeah. warm for? They do, and it's it, it's a, a complicated, simple question. Um, in that you you've got a lot of variables of how cold are you, what are you doing while you're there, uh, while you're out. You know, if if you're sitting in a lukewarm office with your coat on low, and uh, you're not really, it's not working that hard to stay warm. It's going to run about ten hours. If you are on a snowmobile 
going, going, you know, 60 miles an hour with the wind chill and it's working really hard to keep you warm and you're not moving around very much to help it stay warm um, and you've got it on high, you're going to see more like four hours out of it. So what is your biggest market for these? Is it people who, who feel chilly in the office or is it people who are out there skiing? Yeah, so uh, essentially we have uh, kind of a multi-tiered approach, right? So like what Jay was saying in that we design products for specific people in mind, we have our construction uh, jackets and gloves that we market directly to construction companies and people that are out there all day, every day working on the roads and things like that. And then we have our uh, hunting department where we have the different hunting coats and the camo, all of that. So we market that specifically to hunters. We have our snowboarding coats and gloves to which we market to skiers and snowboarders. Um, but overall, the majority of our market share is just the person that is tired of the cold. I mean, there are people that have to commute to work using the subway or walking or even walking their dogs in the morning. And we find that that audience is growing bigger and bigger as more and more people find out about heated apparel. And we continue to be surprised by new markets. Um, along the way, five years into this, five years ago, I didn't know what Raynaud's disease was. And it's a circulatory disorder. So there are, we have customers who firmly believe that they cannot get through the day without their goby. And so they wear it 24 seven, you know, July or December, they're wearing their goby. There's a, we also have quite a strong equestrian following. Um, we, we, there are a lot of nurses who are in chilly uh, emergency rooms or surgical centers. They deliberately keep those areas uh, cooler to, uh, to help with infection spread. And so w there's a lot of nurses and doctors and medical staff who like to throw goby vest on over their scrubs. So we continue to be surprised, um, which is the great part of my job because I get to keep thinking about scenarios where we can design this new thing and make someone's day a little bit better. So how has this pandemic, since we, you brought up the, the emergency room, how has the pandemic affected your ability to, to do what you do and, and get product out there? Well, it, it's been an interesting year, that's for sure. Um, we, we do uh, import from overseas. And so there has been some supply chain issues with us that we have in talking to uh, comparable companies around we've done we've done quite well we've been quite lucky uh, we, we were almost had product on a boat that had 1900 containers fall into the ocean this year so we were actually booked on that vessel and fortuitously got held up in customs and didn't lose our product so there's some fun things that can go along the way uh, we have great customers um, and so you know we go to great lengths to make sure that we have our product to our customers um, when it's within our control. Uh, as far as sales are concerned, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're very fortunate to have made it through 2020 where a lot of companies didn't. We're doing well, we're growing, and our name continues to go out there. Um, one thing we did this year is we were cognizant of, and we saw in reduced um, people searching for heated apparel, but that made us cognizant of people that are, they don't have a wage right now. They, they maybe don't have a coat right now. They don't have food. So what we did is we stepped up our giving this year, understanding that, yeah, we might have less people searching for our products, but that doesn't mean people stop being cold or hungry. So that's one thing that I feel this year has permeated in our whole team where we are just finding ways to donate. We've donated about 3,500 coats to the homeless this year um, and, and donated about 10,000 meals. So that's allowed us to focus on, again, what are the other experiences that mm -hmm. other people are having that we can have an impact on? That's wonderful. Is it still different 
more difficult uh, for a woman to be starting up a company like this and, and making a, a go of it? <laughs> Kyle's smirking because um, I've struggled <laughs> with the identity of woman founder. Um, I, I never wanted any special treatment for, for being a woman founder. Um, and I've, I've never taken it. I actually, to be honest with you, found that it was much harder for me to be a smart driven woman working for other men than it ever was for me to start Gobi as a woman. There was a limit to how far I could go, especially in the part of the country I lived in. Well, you go by the name Jay, so until people see you, they don't really know your gender necessarily, correct? <laughs> that's that's true. I, I uh, you know, I think we all have that experience where you interact with someone via email for several months or even, you know, a couple of years, and then you finally have a meeting or a telephone call, and they're completely flummoxed that um, that I am indeed a woman. Um, so yeah they don't necessarily know that's not why i go by jay i just think that jacqueline is an awful lot of name for someone uh for me <laughs> like me to handle so i uh yeah I, I do think i mean just this last week uh i received an email that was you know dear dear mr janang or dear sir and that that does happen quite a bit and sometimes i just go with it they don't need to know always <laughs> Terrific. So let's take a look ahead. We're, we're at the end of 2020. Thank goodness. Right. So looking ahead to 2021, what, what does that hold? Do you think for, for you, your company and your, uh, your innovations? Well, I'm very proud of the way we conducted ourselves in 2020. Uh, we, we had by all standards, a good year. Um, and I feel good about how 2020 went. Uh, we, 2021 is, is just going to be amazing. We, we have new products coming out, um, launching, are we talking our spring launch? Yeah. We will be launching a heated camping chair, patent pending, um, in February. And we are very excited about this because camping is a we actually go camping every summer as a leadership team um, camping is something that I, I i feel is it's a very exciting market to me people go camping in july and august and they're up in the mountains and it's still cold you know it gets cold when you're out camping um high at high elevations and so i feel that this chair can actually be helpful to our users year round there are those moms, those, you know, God love them, those moms and dads who sit there at those soccer games, baseball games in spring and fall, and they freeze their butts off to support their kids. And, you know, these chairs are going to be great for that. And so moving more into that camping market, I'm very excited about the chair. Uh, we debuted it at the Outdoor Retailers Association show last year. Unfortunately, there's not one this year owing to COVID, but um stay tuned there'll be more great stuff from go heat that, that sounds really exciting and you're not you're not physically carrying that battery either i guess it's attached to the chair i assume it is there there's a zip pocket um that so it's just it's just the left of you and you can uh, also charge your phone while you sit there and watch your child or grandchild playing soccer mm -hmm. or by the fire there camping and so we, we really, again, we're very thoughtful about this product and uh, feel that it will, it will add a lot to a lot of people's experiences. Yeah. Love that. I'm a, I love camping as well. And uh, it sounds like I won't have to lean in towards the fire. I'll lean back instead. Yeah, yeah you just want to put your back on that heat yeah. zone. You'll, you'll be warmed from both sides. <laughs> Terrific. So for more information, I assume the best place to go is going to be Go Be Heat. Go be yes. heat, yes. Go be heat.com. Heat. Wonderful. Well, Jay Janung and Kyle Jacobson, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Continued success. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now this. It takes a lot of listening to build a better radio, and that's just what the folks at Sea Crane have done. Bob Crane and his crew, nestled among the rivers and tallest trees in the world in Fortuna, California, have made a habit of listening to their customers, and that's just what they've done in building the CC Skywave SSB, the Swiss Army knife of portable radios. For everyday listening to AM or FM in the yard or patio or on the nightstand, Without having to drain a mobile phone battery, it's a great companion. But it is also a companion equipped for NOAA weather information and alerts that can be life-saving. You can listen to FEMA and Coast Guard transmissions, too. Beyond all of that, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. It's compact, easy to take with you, and built to last. The CC SkyWave SSB. Click on the link at textonation.com.